In the beginning, there was nothing. An immensity of space, with no beginning and no end. Incredibly dark and cold. Who can imagine that immensity, that darkness, that coldness? When we think of the dark, we think of night. But our night would be like brilliant sunshine in comparison with that darkness. When we think of cold, we think of ice. But ice is positively hot if you compare it with the coldness of space, the space that separates the stars. As hot, you might say, as a blazing furnace from which no heat can escape. In this measureless void of cold and darkness, light is created. There appeared something like a vast, fiery cloud that included all the stars that are in the sky. The whole universe was in that cloud, and among the tiniest of stars was our own world. But they were not stars then. As yet, there was nothing except light and heat. So intense was the heat that all the substances we know, iron, gold, earth, rocks, water, existed as gases, as insubstantial as air. They were fused together in one vast, flaming intensity of light and heat, heat which would make our sun today feel like a piece of ice. This raging, fiery cloud of nothingness, too huge to imagine, moved in the immensity of freezing space, which was also nothingness, but infinitely vaster. The fiery mass was no bigger than a drop of water in that ocean of space. As this cloud of light and heat moved through the empty space, little drops fell from it. Like if you swing some water out of a glass, some of it holds together and the rest breaks up into little drops. The countless hosts of stars are like these little drops. Only, instead of falling, they're moving around in space in such a way that they can never meet. They're millions of miles from each other. Indeed, they are so far away that it takes the light of some of them millions of years to reach us. Do you know how fast light travels? 100 miles? 200 miles? 1,000 miles an hour? No, much faster. It travels 186,000 miles, not per hour, but per second. Imagine how fast that is. That means in one second, light can travel seven times around the whole world. And do you know how big the world is? 25,000 miles. If we were to drive at 100 miles an hour continuously all day and all night long without stopping, it would take us more than 10 days to cover that distance. And yet, light covers it seven times in one second. You snap your fingertips, and it is gone around the earth seven times already. You can imagine how far some of these stars are that it takes their light one million years to reach us. Then there are so many stars that scientists have calculated that if each one of them were a grain of sand, all the stars together would cover up the whole of England up to the height of 200 meters. One of these stars, one of these grains of sand among thousands of billions of grains of sand is our sun, and one millionth part of this grain is our Earth. 
an invisible speck of nothingness. One wouldn't think so. The sun doesn't look so big. But that is because it is so far away. The light from it takes about eight minutes to reach us, and if we were to travel the distance at 100 miles per hour, it would take us a little more than 106 years to reach the sun. Thus, in fact, it is one million times bigger than Earth, so big that one of its flames can contain 22 Earths. When the stars came into being, every scrap of the universe, every speck that we might think too tiny to matter, was given a set of rules to follow. The little particles that are like smoke, like vapor, that could only be distinguished as light and heat, moving at a fantastic speed, became colder and closer and smaller. And so, as they cooled, they moved more and more slowly, clinging closer and closer to each other, occupying less and less space. The particles assumed different states, which man called solid, liquid, and gas. Everything we know is either a gas, a liquid, or a solid. And which of these three states it is at the moment depends on how hot cold it is. Each of the tiny particles was given a special love for certain particles and a special dislike for certain others. Some were attracted to each other and some were not. Just like human beings, they like some and refuse to have anything to do with others. In this way, they combined and formed themselves into different groups. In the solid state, particles cling so closely together that they are almost impossible to separate. They form a body that will not alter its shape unless one applies force. If a piece is broken off, the particles still cling together. If, for instance, you start chipping a flint, the flint and the chips still remain solid pieces of stone. When it comes to liquids, they hold together, but not so very closely. They have no shape of their own and roll over each other. Thus, they flow and spread, filling every hollow, every crevice in their path. They push downwards and sidewards, but never upwards. This is why, though we can put our hands in water, we cannot put them inside a rock. Gas particles do not cling together at all. They can move freely in all directions. But as the particles were also different individuals, they did not become solid or liquid or gas all at the same time. At a certain temperature, some remained solid, others became liquid, and still others became gases. And so, while obeying these laws, the little drop of nothingness that was to become our world, the blazing mass, went on spinning and spinning around itself and around the sun in the tremendous cold of space. And as time went on, the outer ring of this mass began to dance, a dance of the elements. The particles that were at the outermost edge became cold and shrank. Huddling together, they hurried toward the earth. But as soon as they approached the hotter part, they became hot and up they went again. How marvelous it is and how simple. If you become hot, you expand. And as you expand, you become lighter and soar upwards like a bubble of air in the water. But if you become cold, you shrink and fall as a grain of sand sinks to the bottom of a pond. Because of this law, the earth gradually changed from a ball of fire to the earth we know. This was the law that the tiny radiant particles obeyed as they danced their dance. 
particles too minute to be seen or even imagined, yet numerous enough to have produced the world. This dance went on and on. Finally, the particles settled down. Like tired dancers, one after another, they became first liquid and then solid. And as they became solid or liquid, some of them joined others to which they were attracted, forming new substances. The heavier ones went nearer to the heart of the earth, and the lighter ones floated above them like oil floating on water. A thin scum was formed, like the skin that forms on milk when it's boiled and left to cool. It seemed as if the earth had taken some shape. But the elements inside the skin were still very hot and felt trapped. They wanted to get out. What could they do otherwise? They had to follow the law. If you are hot, you expand. There was no place to expand, so they burst out. They broke the skin, and it was like a terrible fight. The water that formed on the surface turned immediately into vapor and went up as the hot stuff came out from the inside of the earth. There were also ashes. A veil of cloud was drawn to cover the earth so that no one could see what was going on. Eventually, the fighting ceased. As everybody cooled down, more and more gases became liquid, and more and more liquids became solid. The earth itself shrank and became wrinkled like an old apple that has been left in a cupboard. The wrinkles are the mountains, and the hollows are the oceans. For as soon as the rocks had cooled down, water was able to return to the earth, and it rained and rained and rained. And the water, being liquid, filled every hollow and crevice it found in its path. Thus, the oceans were formed. Above them was the air, the air that we breathe. The cloud had disappeared. The veil was withdrawn, and the sun could once again smile upon the earth. Rocks, water, air, solids, liquids, and gases. Today, as it was yesterday, and all the years before, the laws are obeyed in the self-same way. The world spins around itself, and round and round the sun, and today, as it was in all the years before, the earth and all the elements and compounds it is made of, they fulfill their task.